Welcome to the finals of the Korean StarCraft League number 47. It's time for a best of five series of Zerg versus Protoss. I mean, it's a Korean tournament grand finals, an online event. Who do you think is playing? Spotting right here in the top left corner of a map called Ghost River. Playing with the blue Zerg drones, we have none other than Dark. And his opponent in the top right, playing with the red Protoss pieces. He goes by the name of Hero. Hero going up against Dark. This is a classic rivalry in 2024 StarCraft 2. These two have played against each other so many times. They play in practically every online event and because of that, well, we get to witness them play against each other quite a bit because they're very good and usually they make it to, at the very least, the semi-finals. Now, here's the thing about Dark taking on Hero though, or I guess Hero taking on Dark. I've recently had the honor of casting quite a few games where Raynor is playing against Klim. And those two, they really push the opponent to new levels, right? They push each other to the absolute limit and we see StarCraft 2 that we really have never seen before. Those players are so good that they just bring out the best in one another. These two, however, <laughs> I want to put this gently. But honestly, they bring out the worst in one another. Yeah, we've seen them play fantastic macro games over the years, but whenever they play against each other, they just bring out the cheesiest build orders. It usually seems to be Dark who tries to drag his opponent into the mud. Usually Hero tries to start off the series with relatively yeah, macro-focused gameplay, and then at some point, Dark just brings them down to that level where they're wrestling each other and it's an absolute disaster. And I love watching it, even though it usually gets very messy. They start hitting supply blocks we see cheese after cheese after cheese ah, it's so much fun now we do find ourselves on ghost river and this is in my experience so far a pretty tricky map for zerk problem is you only have one third base location and the rush distance is incredibly small most of the time at least with modern map design you have at the very least two choices for a third base so there would be one right over here and then maybe one right over there but this map doesn't have it as a matter of fact there's only like a handful of bases in total for both players and uh, the rush distance like i said it's like 29 seconds or so it's incredibly short so We'll have to see exactly how this plays out. Hero is going to use the Chrono Boost right there on the Adept. So he's going to be able to get this one across very easily. Taking the third base is going to be tough. Yeah, so he's going to send a drone down right now. I think Hero can easily block this. And there we go. This is where that Chrono Boost really comes in handy. The Adept shows up. This third base... Oh, we're even going to put down a pylon. This third base has been denied really nicely. All right, right from the get-go. This is gonna get very sloppy. We've got ourselves a Twilight Council opener here for heroes, so no shenanigans here with a Stargate or anything like that. Dark sees this right now as well with a Zerkling that he did send straight across the map. Still some shenanigans over at the third base. We're now three minutes in. There's still no base taken. As a matter of fact, we've got the gas going right here for... For Dark. Uh, Dark decides to pull drones. <gasps> Dark is going for a drone rush right now. Well, I think this, uh, yeah, fits exactly what I was trying to say. So one thing you can do really nicely with drones is mineral walk through units that are in the wall of. If you right-click one of your opponent's mineral fields, you can see that they're facing through it. That being said, this adept actually not entirely, uh, yeah, focused. Sleeping on the job just a little bit. The Zerklings, however, are trailing behind a bunch, and you know what? Hero says, welcome to my base. A recall on the Stalker does not quite complete it, it seems like, but he says, welcome to my base, as he locks the Zerklings out. And, well, I guess at the same time also locks those drones inside with them. Uh, apparently this is the moment where we go for a proxy hatch, but I don't think he's going to be able to break into the natural expansion at this rate. Yeah, warp gates are done, and just like that, it's Hero who obtains the victory. Hmm, okay, so I was saying previously that usually it seems to be Dark who provokes Hero to start playing a little bit more cheesy. <laughs> Game number one, it certainly was the other way around. Hero bullying his opponent out of a third hatchery, and Dark decided, you know what? I'm gonna send the workers. It's actually quite a clever style, so it looked pretty stupid in that previous game. We don't really see it very often on the professional StarCraft 2 games, right? Or on the professional tournament level, I guess, but... On the ladder, it's actually quite a powerful build. So what you can do, I tried explaining this, but say there's like a, an adept on hold position over here and a bunch of structures over there. 
You can have Zerklings at the front, and the drones can mineral walk. If you send your drones, so you select them over here, and you right-click them onto, for example, that mineral field, they will actually glide through the unit in the wall off. At which point, the Zerklings can work away at the Adept on hold position, and then the drones from the back. And you can actually open up the front door quite nicely that way. Now, I think Dark was a little bit confused about the Adept shade. He probably was trying to decide if his opponent was trying to trick him, but I think it was actually just a misplay from Hero. He wasn't paying attention. But the Zerklings of Dark, they were busy working on that Adept and the Stalker. And ultimately, even though the Stalker's recall did not complete, <laughs> it worked out fine for Hero because the drones were disconnected from the links. So, very messy right from the start. That's exactly what we love to see. So far, though, really Hero. All right. No, actually, this is not too weird. I was looking at the supply count right there of Dark for just a second. Never mind, I thought for a second this was like an 18 supply Nexus. Not quite the case. 20 supply Nexus is very normal. I'm assuming, there we go, 20 supply Cybernetics Core as well. An 18 Nexus would be a little bit funky, because that would mean that he's been cutting probes. And uh, that would not be entirely optimal. You still actually have to cut some workers as Protoss, even when you do go for the 20 supply Nexus and, uh, well, the CC on the back of it too, the Cybernetics Core. Not the Command Center. This is actually something that really confused me back in the day when I first started reading about StarCraft II build orders. I remember people using the abbreviation CC for both Command Center as well as CyberCore. And in my young days, I was like, wait, does does Protoss? Huh? Protoss has access to the... Huh? How can I make a Command Center with Protoss? It makes no sense. Long time ago, guys. <laughs> Long time ago. I'm a little bit more knowledgeable about the game these days. Just a tiny bit. Anyways, so far... Very normal game. So, by the way, one thing that is worth noting, when both of these players decide to play big premier tournaments, like, for example, the GSO Code S or I Am Kodovitsa, those are recent events that come to mind, they seem to play the game very differently. So, it's really when they play against each other in online events, and I mean, obviously, Dark is pretty cheesy overall in online tournaments, but they really do approach big tournaments differently than they would smaller online tournaments, and... It's a, uh, yeah, it's a stylistic choice. I mean, that one game that I recently casted featuring Dark versus Astrea, if you haven't seen it yet, I'll go ahead and post the link to it down below in the description of this video. <sighs> the final game in that particular series is a blast. If you don't want to watch the full video, which I recommend you do, I recommend you go and check out the final game in that particular series. There's a link down below in the description of this video. That is one of the cheesiest games that I've ever seen. Like, even Bly would be impressed, you know? Even Bly would be looking at that particular game, he's like, Oh my god, you really did it all. Proxy hatchery, spine crawler rush, zirkling drops, another proxy hatch, we had a baneling situation, slow baneling drops, I mean, we we had the entire Protoss, or the entire, rather, Zerk book of cheese. And, uh, yeah, that's a Dark game to a T, but Dark would never play that style, it seems, when it comes to, well, tournaments that have a ton of prize money, so... Anyways, for now, this is very normal. Yeah, maybe this is Dark, going for the more conventional approach here instead. Oracle is spotted right now. Hero tried to be smart there and rally that Oracle in such a way that the, well, the Zerg wouldn't notice. But, yep, the Queen's certainly picked up on it. Sport Crawler's coming up too. I think this, oh, well, Dark. Oh, he's, he's making the assumption that his opponent is making the assumption that we're making the assumption that the Oracle is going away and that ultimately, yeah, we're going to end up losing drones. When the mind games go one step too far. Yeah, he assumed that we had a rear rally right there off, uh, off the Oracle because it got spotted that it would fly on over towards the third base. It didn't. It just went into the most likely location. It's funny when you try to mind game a little too hard and you try to be in the head of your opponent a bit too much. Sometimes the most obvious choices actually become the very best ones. Alrighty, this is that more new school approach from Protoss where they sent quite a few adepts. So this is not a Glaives follow-up or anything like that, like what we saw in the previous game. This is just a bunch of adepts together with a bunch of oracles. Very good harassment squad, although this is a beautiful surround right here by Dark. Uh, if you can finish off two more, it would be really nice. Okay, well, ultimately, you know what? Looks like these adepts are gonna be able to get away and that does make the game a bit easier. In the meantime, an Oracle has swooped around over at the third base. One of them does fall at the edge of the creep. So we're talking eight drones, though, for an Adept and an Oracle. If that Oracle wouldn't have gone down, this would have been amazing for Hero. But this is, of course, still very, very good. Third Nexus done right now. 
Gotta go for the blink together with the plus one. Yep. This is very conventional. So, if you're wondering what a quote-unquote normal game of Zerg versus Protoss at the highest level looks like right now, this is basically it. Zerg usually is the punching bag early on. Protoss in the meantime is aiming for about a dozen worker kills. If they get a dozen, they're very far ahead. If they get 10, they're certainly also slightly ahead. Especially if you don't really lose too much in the process. But ultimately, right, it's all about trying to slow down that macro mechanic of the Zerg. The fact that Zerg has the larva, well, it allows them to pump out a ton of drones very, very quickly. And because of that, it's up to the Protoss player to try and slow it down. We have a split on the evolution chambers. All right. A married couple. They're uh, kind of far apart. Maybe they've had an argument or something. It's okay. Hydro then coming up right now. Double upgrades. We have double expand as well for Dark, by the way. So he took a fourth and a fifth base at the same time. One thing that is unconventional, though, in this particular game is that Dark has skipped the Bailing Nest and he's also skipped a Roach Warren. So a Glaive to Depth opener, like what we saw in the previous game, could have actually hit him pretty hard. Instead, what Dark is doing is Mass Eco and what seems to be Mass Hydra. There is an infestation pit on the back of this, so this could be a hive together with a lurker then. Maybe a hive together with vipers for support, for example. There is certainly that potential. Luckily here for Dark, this should be A-OK -okay for him, even though this has been a gateway explosion on the back of this. So we've had six additional gateways built here for Hero. Blink is going to finish up. I think, I think Hydra should be alright against this, assuming Dark does not get too greedy. He's going straight up to over 80 workers. I think that's actually a bit too much. These Stalkers are going to hurt him, a, I think, quite a bit. Okay, well, ultimately those Adepts from earlier are going to fall. Stalkers do Blink on top of the Queens. Hydras are coming, Lurker Den is coming, Hive is building. Dark set 79 drones. That's a lot of workers. I'm a little afraid though right here for Dark. I think that extra round of like seven drones he made could really bite him in the butt. Although, Hero is on a bit of a timer. As soon as all these upgrades finish up for the Hydralisks, they are gonna pack a punch. Right now they're still kind of weak. I think he can poke and prot with these Stalkers all he likes. Oh, you know what? He's certainly doubling down, going for a proxy gateway and even a shield battery right now in the middle of the map. This is going to be his location to warp reinforcements in from. Okay, we did have a new Oracle, by the way, added into the mix as well. I do kind of like that. Hydras just have such high DPS. Yeah, now the drones are forced away from their mineral line too. No fourth nexus or anything along those lines. This is Hero essentially going all in. And upon seeing all of this infrastructure being built in the middle of the map, Dark decided to pull those drones. But I really don't like these fights right here for the Zerg. These are super costly engagements. More Stalkers coming up. Even though not all the Stalkers are, well, firing, and the Concave here is quite good for the Zerg. There we go. Aggressive blink forward. It's because that first Lurker has been spotted. Revelation being used right here on the Oracles. Queens and Hydras trying to snipe down those Oracles. So that means that there's no detection currently available right here for the Protoss. And even though this has been a very sketchy engagement for Dark, the fact that there is no detection here for Protoss may ultimately make this okay. If you can sneak out just a couple more Lurkers, this would be very manageable. New Oracle is coming up. He needs to get more Revelation. Hero all army hotkeying all of them into that Zerg ball. Not quite optimal. I mean, this is what we know Hero for. We love Hero. He's one of the best players in the world, but... The man is addicted to the old army hotkey. Yeah, it really it has to be said. We did not need to see four oracles die in this game, okay? That's completely unnecessary. Anyways, Hive at this point is done. You know what? Lurker upgrades. Yeah, they've already finished. I think one of them is done. Seismic Spines. That's the ranged research for those lurkers. The only way in which I can see Dark coming back into this is him getting enough Lurkers out, because Stalkers just don't really do much against it. But obviously this game should have been over if he did have just one more Revelation available there. I still think this is a fantastic spot right now, though, for Hero. Making it more difficult than it absolutely has to be. Stalkers, in the meantime, going around up north. Blink aggressive right there on one of those Lurkers, and the hatchery over here is going to fall. In the meantime, on the other side of the map, a fourth Nexus is building. Okay. I think Dark is going to have one final attack in him. And it's going to be a scary one, I'm not going to lie. This is a very strange follow-up here from Hero. He decides to go into the Glaive's research. And that does concern me a little bit. I think going double Robo into Immortals and maybe even Archons or something would have been a whole lot better. Because the only thing he really needs to do is hold the next attack here from Dark. Now, 
I say all of that. The Dark is actually expanding behind this, and he fires up 2-2. Two, two. Okay, so we've actually got ourselves a bit of a macro game here. Dark does not take the bait to try and go all in. Instead, he's just happy to play this game from behind. Oh, this... If, if Hero ends up losing this, this is a very frustrating game for him. Yeah. Him being late on that revelation and not having an observer tech available just made it so tricky. And now suddenly you're playing against a bunch of lurkers. Lurkers just deal so much damage. When you have a bunch of them together, I don't think you can really engage very easily anymore with the Hydralisk. Alright, there's the Templar Archives. The charts upgrade is coming up and double immortal production. I do like this. I think the glaives upgrade was kind of silly Fourth Nexus could have been a bit quicker too, but I think hero is just trying to he wanted to close out the game And then he yoloed in those oracles for no apparent reason and you know, ultimately it's forcing him right now to make the transition towards something else dark <laughs> Spreading a creep tumor underneath the Zerk army or underneath rather the Protoss army All right so that hatchery is not going to happen, Council, but we do have Dark going for a Nidus network. I think the plan is to try and maybe sneak in an Overseer into the opponent's main base, drop down the Nidus Worm and try to get the Lurker somewhere in this bit of space. It is very difficult for Protoss to break Lurkers when they have to move up a ramp, and Dark knows it. Dark stuck though for the most part on just the economy that he's got. It's not bad, but it's also nothing to write home about. Oh, lurkers, lurkers! Oh, careful, hero. Ay, ay, ay. I do really like the Nidus Worm here. Do we have any detection anywhere? I think if he gets vision of the opponent's main base, life is going to be manageable, but maybe he feels like that's not the correct choice. There is a lot of vision around the main ramp as well for hero, so it shouldn't be a complete surprise. Fleet Beacon coming up. Additional Stargates building. Okay. Yeah, so Hero's intention was to win the game, but now apparently he decided to take a full 180 turn in this game. He's decided, you know what? We're not risking it. I am not ready to pull all of my or to put all of my eggs in one basket. I'm gonna try and see if I can win the game a little bit later on. Let him come to me. I think that's an excellent choice. I'll be at a bit of a risky one though. Dark is able to remax once again. Looks like he is gonna be able to grab a hatchery here too. Lurkers in the meantime working and finishing up those rocks. Okay, Nidus Worm coming up. This is more like a like a like a retreating Nidus Worm. Storm is available, by the way. But good storms. Okay, another observer getting yellowed in. I'm not sure what is. Uh, yeah. We've seen too many units just all army in, uh, or army hotkeyed in, but it's a bit messy. Anyways, I think this is for like reinforcements and potentially retreating rather than like into the main base. This is so sketchy though for Hero. Suddenly those lurkers are here. The Lings are running into the natural expansion because there was no unit on hold position. In the meantime though, a Zealot run by, Stalker run by as well on the other side of the map. Storms are going to be used over here. I think we must have had a recall towards the natural expansion. A lot of units are falling though. Zealots here in the meantime. I think they will get cleaned up too with the lurkers and the reinforcements. Stalkers are running back home. Oh, dark. Yeah, you give this man a finger and he will grab your entire hand. Okay, a lot of damage here being done to the stalkers that are coming in from the back. Tempests are building. They're a slow unit and they take forever to get out. But in the meantime, Hero is losing so much stuff. And what was looking like a dominating victory for Hero, because Dark got a little bit too greedy with his drones, ultimately seems to turn right now into a Zerg advantage. Now that being said, there's still no good answer right now against these Tempests, but there is also still no freaking detection. We have one Oracle available, a couple of big storms over here, but obviously these units have a ton of hit points. <sighs> Observers? Can we get at least... Yeah, there's two of them available right now. 21 probes, though, have fallen. Hydra's reinforcing this unit composition as well. This is not quite a game-winning situation for the Zerg just yet. Another juicy storm. But I think if Dark manages to clean up these final units, there it is. GG is cold. It's our Zerg player who obtains the victory. A friend of heroes really should log into his StarCraft 2 account and unbind the old army hotkey. I feel like it's costing him so many games. It's one of those things that is incredibly handy when you use it correctly, but I think every StarCraft player have got this experience. If you've played 
a couple thousand games probably historically, you know that at some point there's always that moment where you start relying on the old army hotkey a little bit too much. I have this in my own games too. It just, it works really well when you use it effectively, but sometimes it becomes like, it becomes a bit of a crutch, you know, like you default to using the old army hotkey. And when the games get very chaotic, you find yourself pulling units from watchtowers, your run by squads get pulled back home, your observers, for example, or your oracles in that previous game, they get pulled into positions where you really don't need them to, uh, need them to be. It's just, yeah, it's just a shame. I think it would be really good for Hero, unironically, for him to just unbind the hotkey for like two weeks, play a couple hundred games, and then rebind it again, you know? Like, you don't have to leave it off permanently. But I think it's become a bit too frequent. I've seen so many games where, like, that previous game was just a straight-up throw. I know there will always be people in the comment section are like, oh, Zerg Lurkers, so overpowered. Look, that game, nothing to do with balance. I think that was Heroes to lose, and he managed to pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> Very impressive. Now, we find ourselves in Amphion. This is one of the new maps. This map is a little bit strange as well, just like the other new maps. In the sense that there is a base that you can very easily take by mining out the mineral fields. And if your opponent does the same thing, the problem you run into is that you suddenly are next door neighbors. So this area of the map, so basically from this mineral wall, from the rocks to the left, same side obviously, or same thing right here on the other side of the map too. That is only accessible after the minerals or the rocks are destroyed. Or I guess with flying units, right? But basically at this point in the game, the entire section of the map is inaccessible. Well, at this point, Hero has mined out the little mineral wall and he's going to use it, it looks like, to grab himself. Oh, I thought so anyways. Grab himself a really nice and early expansion? Really? We're going to go for this one? So there's a base in the middle of those two locations. That has a bunch of golden mineral fields in it. I really don't think it's good, though. I don't think two golden minerals are going to make this significantly better. All right, well, that's what we're taking. Hero decided to go for a Void Ray as well. This is a unit that I think you usually want to avoid. <laughs> Look, and you're so funny. I'm going to hit the like button. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Void Ray, though, is generally not that good of a unit. But I think in this instance, when you're trying to hide something... It is quite powerful. No Overlord is going to be heading towards that left side of the map right now. And since, well, we have an Adept preventing these mineral fields from being mined by the Zerg player, there's really no easy way for Dark to go in there. Oracle, in the meantime, on the back of this, grabbing now three confirmed kills. Not bad at all. Now, obviously, Dark has decided to go for an expansion that is further away from the Protoss. Usually, Zergs like to expand away from their opponents. And Dark, apparently, in this game, no different. That means, though, that this base is completely unscouted. These are not rich Vespian geysers, Hero. Oh, okay. We're going straight Fleet Beacon together with a second Stargate? Okay, in the meantime, Oracles together with a Void Ray, putting in a lot of work. Looks like another Queen falls. Void Ray will stay alive for now. Oh, 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 oh no. <laughs> not again. Oh, okay, well, fair enough. All right. No, yeah, sure. Lose one of those as well, man. Yep. There you go. Hey, can you buy ice cream here? Oh, yeah. They have a little ice cream bar. That's cute. What's less cute, though, is that we've had a bunch of losses here that were completely preventable. Now, one nice thing that is going quite well, though, for Hero is that he's teched all the way up towards the ultimate Skytos units, and his opponent has no clue. Lair only just now about halfway done, and the first carrier is already on the production tab. We've had a couple more worker kills here, so six worker kills in total. I think killing the queens was nice because it prevents any sort of, like, queen marches. Or at the very least, it makes any queen marches quite a bit more difficult to pull off. So maybe I shouldn't say prevent, because that is kind of a big word, but... A lot of overlords moving this way. I, I kind of... Hmm. I would kind of feel like making another Void Ray and just <laughs> try to snipe some of them. Guess you can do the same thing with carriers here eventually. We'll have to see what they decide to do. One single sentry hanging out here with some static defense and a bunch of probes. Not a well-protected base. But as long as the mineral fields, yeah, as long as the mineral fields over here are unmined and the rocks are still up, there's no easy way for Dark to figure this out, so he... 
He doesn't know exactly what's happening. He's probably made the assumption that this base has been taken. I think it will be taken here very soon. So we do hit a supply block right now. Hero, massively supply blocked actually. He's still not started up anything. Hello, Hero. Now we start up a pylon. Ugh, Ugh a bit ugly. Yeah, he queued up another carrier. And he couldn't make it, and then he decided to make a pylon, and now rather than canceling the carrier, we're still gonna delay that base some more. <sighs> Night is worm, coming up. Now obviously that's another way to get across the map. We've got ourselves an infestation pit here as well for Dark, who's going swarm hosts! Oh no, this is actually... Probably worst case scenario. Now he sees the carriers here. I don't think you ever want to go swarm host against this sort of army composition. You need to respect the carriers. Maybe if the queens can like keep all of these zerg bases alive, it is possible for the swarm host to put in some work, but you really do need a reliable source of anti-air. We still do not have any sort of spire taken. We're gonna go neural parasite instead. Is that gonna be our source of anti-air dark? Are you sure? Night is warm in the meantime, coming up. You know what, maybe this can work. We've got ourselves the speed upgrade for the Void right now on the production tab too. I think Dark is planning on countering his army by taking control of the army with Night is warm. Or sorry, not with Night is warm, but with, uh, with Infestors. I mean, to be fair, this is gonna be a bit of a surprise though, and that Nexus can just be tapped. I don't think you can really keep it alive, although the carriers are close by. Yeah, Dark decided to take this one uh, rel uh, relatively safely. He's gonna target this one, and he's also trying to go after the Cyber Core. I don't think he's gonna get either. Nope. Well, I think if he would have targeted the Nexus, he would have gotten it. If he would have, yeah, targeted the Cyber Core, he would have also definitely had it. But he wanted everything. Greed is not good. That's what we've learned. Knight is in the middle of the map. Probably trying to see if he can rain some units on over in that direction. Suddenly, though, this game is looking very tricky here for the Zerg player. That being said, it all comes down to the Neural Parasite. So that is, of course, that ability that allows those units to temporarily take control of this army. There's only two Infestors right now, but more are spawning. Units that spawn do not have enough energy to actually take control of these units just yet. But there are a few that, yeah, already have been out for a little bit longer. You can cast this spell while Neuro, oh, while Burrowed as well, and I think this is gonna be the first one. Yep. Assimilation successful. <laughs> Microbial Shroud used on the Queens. This is what we're using to. I. Dude, you gotta you gotta reward the man's creativity sometimes. It's so sick. The fact that he's decided to not actually make Hydras or Corruptors, but to try and counter his army with Queens and Infestors. Very funky, it doesn't work. I think the man is just slowly losing his game now. But, eh, credit where credit is due. I think if Dark would have been given like another 30 seconds or so, if he would have had just a bit more energy on more of those infestors, he could have turned like four or five of those carriers. And suddenly that fight would have looked very different, right? So with some of these engagements, you look kind of dumb, but it could have very easily gotten in favor of the Zerg. Oceanborn, it's gonna be our next game in this best of five series. Match point right here for Hero, who's decided to open up once again pretty standard. I really wonder why he decided to go for those two golden mineral fields. So to clarify, right? The golden minerals return seven minerals a trip, whereas the regular mineral fields, the blue ones, they return five minerals a trip. Is there another downside to taking that third base? I'm not exactly sure, to just... Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think... I, I wouldn't be surprised, by the way, if this is the very first time that some of these games, or some of these players, rather, are playing on these new maps. Maybe they've played a handful of games on it so far, but we are still certainly now in the experimental phase of... Ooh, of tournament play, where these guys are just messing around a little bit, and they're trying to figure out what the best threat is. This build right over here from Dark is a bit of a Dark special. He has decided to go for a very quick third hatchery here. So this third hatchery went down long before any sort of Protoss unit could ever show up. Gas Geyser is later because of it, so he's decided to delay it, and he's only mining it with a single drone. So eventually we should see link speed, but I wonder if this will lead towards some sort of spicy all-in, because this is gonna give him a nice early game boost. 
Twilight Council opener once again here for Hero. Which is kind of cool, actually. I feel like we've seen Stargate, like, 9 out of 10 games that I've seen in this particular matchup lately, where they just keep going Stargate, and it's just Stargate after Stargate after Stargate. Obviously, Twilight Council can be powerful, especially when you hit your opponent with a timing attack that they don't quite expect. Oh, is this Dark Trent? No. I thought for a second it was gonna Dark Shrine. Is it gonna be Glaives? What exactly is the plan here? We do have a lot of gas. We have more gas than we need for Glaives, actually. I think it could be... Yeah, I think it's still gonna be a Dark Shrine. Hmm, okay. Dark Shrine Rush. So this is a three-minute Dark Shrine after an expansion. That is very, very quick. Could have, I guess, also been Blink, but two base Blink is a little bit funky. Not usually something that you would see in this matchup. Obviously against Terran. Yeah, that's something we see in a lot of games. Anyways. Spawning Pool is going to be getting its good old Metabolic Boost upgrade. And this upgrade is so late, actually. I'm a little afraid that the series is going to end with a bunch of Dark Templar marching in and Zerg not having any detection. Now he's going Spore Crawler. No, he skipped the Spore Crawler. So one bit of information that Dark is going to get that is... Maybe a little bit strange, but he will see at about the four minute mark that it's not an Oracle. So you expect an Oracle to come flying in right about right now. There is a Spore Crawler in the natural. That may actually still prompt him to make a Spore Crawler, because he knows that this is either going to be Glaives right now, or for example, Dark Templar. And usually that still does mean that you want to go for a Spore Crawler. I think Spore Crawler right now, even with a Spine Crawler, could be a good option. Anyways, the Invisible Men are coming up. There is no lair or anything along those lines here for Dark, so no way for him to get any sort of mobile detection. He's making a bunch of links, but he's not taking the gamble. He's seen that there is no third Nexus taken at the likely location, and because of that, he's assuming that this is going to be some sort of all-in. I mean, it is certainly a very committed push here from Hero, but it's really only a handful of units. Okay, now he sees what exactly is going on. The Dark Templar do show up. Got ourselves, okay. The Spore Crawler running on over, but I think he just targeted down. Transfuse? Do we have Transfuse? <gasps> we didn't have! Oh my god, we didn't have actually any energy. I think there was one queen that had energy, but maybe she was out of range. Either way, the units, they were clicked onto the Warp Prism. And that now means... Ah, oh, Dark is actually... He's getting respect here from his opponent, but... I wonder if he should have just dived in and... Mm -hmm. Always a difficult decision to make, right? So Hero decided, nope, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna take the gamble. Prism in a little bit of trouble. Dark Templar micro left, right, and center. And ultimately, this is pretty darn good for the Zerk. Yeah. Honestly, that crisis management, it looked like he was absolutely gonna lose everything and ultimately he just lost two drones and a spore crawler. That is kind of absurd and maybe also a reason as to why we don't see this build very often. Because now you're kind of forced into an all in. It is Blink, by the way, on the back it is, and a whole lot of gateways. Yeah, we have lots of gateways, actually, now. So this is Dark Templar into a 8-gate Blink Stalker all-in? I'm inclined to say that that is not a build. Well, it is a build, in the strictest sense of the word, but not a competitive one. Love the Spore Crawler positioning here, by the way, from the Zerk. Really cool stuff. Zoning away against that prism, preventing the Archon drop. Plus one melee coming up. Uh, this is gonna hit like a truck though, this is gonna be a lot of Stalkers. The thing is, we're on two bases and eight gateways worth of Stalker production. I don't think you can even really afford that. I think seven is probably the max. Anyways, oh, alright, we're gonna donate one of our critical units. But apparently, it's just gonna be a bunch of Stalkers, Dark Templar, and then our Archons. Let's see. I mean, that's a lot of Protoss. Dark should have the production at this point to shut most of this down. Keep in mind that in about three minutes time or so, Protoss will start running low on cash because the main is gonna start running out, right? So this is on a strict timer in the sense that he's just not gonna have minerals forever. Transfusions being used right here. Link's running into the Archons. I don't like that here for the Zerk whatsoever. Aggressive Link forward right now by Hero. Link's coming in around the back as well, trying to see if they can get a hit. Once again, they do get met here with these Archons, and they are putting in a ton of work. Drones also forced away from their mineral lines. And Okay, Hero is going to continue producing here. I'm fairly sure he cannot produce out of all of those gateways. 
He's probably got a, at least two gateways right now on cooldown that are available to go, but... Or off cooldown, I guess, is the better way to put that. So far, well handled here by Dark, but he is not quite out of the water just yet. Those Ravagers are incredibly powerful here. Okay. If this goes on for another two minutes, Hero is gonna slowly start fizzling out. Although, ooh, a couple of roaches here get donated. Somehow they were not on the control group. Maybe Dark should be using the O Army hotkey. That wouldn't have happened. <laughs> Sorry. We, we've got ourselves a very scary stalker army, though. This is funny because these units have basically not gone through any changes over the years, and it seems like lately. Protoss players around the globe have found more value out of their basic units, and there it is. It's Hero who obtains the victory with a Dark Templar into 8-gate Stalker all-in on two bases. Really? Today I want to give a special shout out to the Patreon supporters. Thank you very much for directly supporting the channel. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to my Patreon page down below in the description of this video. Also, of course, shout out to you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. For now, though, have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile. And I hope to see you once again very soon for another video.